let us try to see how does it look like and how we decide the what is the source of the lamination, what is the source of the problem. A surface lamination in the product will look like this, you know the surface is getting sort of torn. This is because of some entrapment, large entrapment which causes the surface problem in the final product, roll product, whether it is a hot roll product or a cold roll product. If you get a lamination, like lamination basically means sort of additional surface is getting generated. So, the surface lamination it has been found that they are associated with exogenous entrapment. So, long I have been talking about we have to prevent exogenous entrapment. So, if some large exogenous entrapment gets inside the liquid steel, so during casting it will get entrapped, then during rolling it will come near the surface and the surface will have some defects which is called surface lamination. Now, if you cut a sample from your small sample, put it under scanning electron microscope where there is a possibility of knowing what are the elements present in the entrapments. Entrapment is basically I have told you basically these are oxides. Now, what type of oxides you have to understand, we have to study, then only we will know where from they have come, what is their genesis. So, in scanning electron microscope which has a WDX or EDX attachment that means, when the electrons are falling on the surface X-rays are getting generated. So, from the X-rays we can know from the wavelength we can know what are the elements present in the exogenous entrapments. So, the defect was looking like this. So, you see this is under the microscope, optical microscope it looks like this. Then if you put it under the scanning electron microscope, the secondary electron will look like this, the defect. And then from the elemental X-ray analysis, we can know what are the elements present, whether it is calcium, whether there is silicon, whether there is sodium. These elements will give us certain clue, will give us certain cl definite clues as to the genesis of the entrapments. Like we know if calcium is present, if sodium is present, if silicon is present, that means it is a complex oxide of calcium, silicon and sodium. And we have mentioned you know like what are the possibilities, like if it is a slag, it is a little slag, we know it is basically very much rich in calcium oxide and some amount of aluminum oxide and small amount of silicon oxide will be there some very small amount of iron oxide also might be there. If it is tundish slag, this relatively it is more rich in silicon oxide. Where from silicon oxide is coming? It is coming from the you know uh, tundish slag. That means, tundish slag which we, we, I have told that it is a basically two stage tundish slag. The lower amount, lower layer is basically rich in calcium oxide, but the top layer is basically rice husk which has very, which is very rich in silicon oxide. So, some amount of silicon oxide also will come to the tundish slag. So, it is relatively rich in silicon oxide compared to ladle slag. Then mold slag, I have mentioned that it is, it has some amount of sodium, certain amount of calcium fluoride. So, depending on what are the elements present, we can know what are the genesis. Like here we are getting calcium, we are getting silicon, we are getting sodium. So, sodium indicates, so presence of sodium indicates that definitely it is coming from the mold slag. So, this is important, how we decide what is the source. So, the casting has already taken place, rolling has taken place, we have found defects on the surface, we are trying to know where from these defects have come. So, it is a post mortem analysis, we cut small samples then we decide to do lot of analysis, first we see under the optical microscope, then we these defects can be if these are relatively big, this can be seen non, with normal eye, even with normal naked eye it can be seen that means, it is a very large size of defect which is forming in the rolled product. And there under this defects there are exogenous entrapments. So, we want to know what are the source where from these exogenous entrapments have come. So, we can know this by putting this sample under scanning electron microscope 
where there are EDX or WDX attachments. WDX means wet, wave length dispersive analysis of X-ray. EDX means energy dispersive analysis of X-ray. This we will take up later on uh, subsequently in details, you know, where how uh, you know different defects are analyzed and all I will take up. But just to give you an idea of how the defect looks like, what is the source of defect, we can know by putting it under scanning electron microscope which has WDX or EDX attachments. So, from where the elemental X-rays can be detected, detector can analyze what are the elements present in the sample from the wavelength or from the energy. So, you know this area you just see where calcium is present. Some of the you know that means these are the areas, this is the defect area which is which we have found that it is they have calcium, we have found they have lot of silicon, we have found there are some silicon sodium. So, from this analysis we know what is the source of the defect. Since sodium is present we can tell that the source is mold slag. So, we have to be careful why mold slag has been entrained, whether the you know the level of fluctuation was more, whether the proper mold uh, slag characteristic was not used, mold powder characteristic was not uh, the desirable uh, viscosity and in interfacial tension. So, what was the reason we have to analyze? So, this is an important you know source of analysis, important way of understanding where from the defect has come. Then I had mentioned last time that you know the exogenous entrapments they are not uniformly found in the cast or rolled product. As I have mentioned the start or end of casting there is a possibility of having reoxidation products. So, argon shrouding is the solution. Then there is a possibility of tundish slag at the end of the casting if you do not allow to if you do not allow some amount of liquid steel to remain in the tundish toward the end of the casting. So, suitable dam and wear are necessary they allow some amount of liquid steel to remain in the tundish and do not allow the slag to get you know inside the mold. So, this is very important. Then during steady state cutting as I was telling there is a possibility of mold slag entrainment as we have found in the samples what we have, we have, we have analyzed. So, what was the problem? Maybe the suitable character this is steady state casting I am talking about that means steady state casting means too much of fluctuation was not there normally too much of fluctuation you will find in unsteady state of casting. That means, when there is a change in you know, casting speed or similar reasons will be there, but in steady state casting there is a possibility of even getting mole slag entrainment. If the powder characteristics are not suitable that means, the viscosity and interfacial tension of the powder was not suitable. So, there is a possibility of mole slag entrainment. Then at the time of little changeover, there is a possibility of little slag getting inside tundish and finally getting inside, subsequently getting entrained in the liquid steel and finally getting in the mold and during casting it gets entrained. So, what is the uh, way out? Way out is you detect the slag, you have a detector when slag is coming towards the end of the uh, little uh, changeover, at the end at the time of little changeover towards the end of uh, little getting emptied. So, either there should be a detector or there has to be some amount of liquid steel in the little so that slag does not come. So, these precautions are necessary. Then I have mentioned that there is a sudden change in the meniscus level you know or sudden change of speed. So, there is a possibility of ent entrapment of mole slag or even powder. So, I had mentioned that the start or end of casting have more defects. So, we may separately keep those cast products or the slab or bloom or billet, so that we can separately process the material, because it is expected that the start or end of casting will have more entrapments, the cleanliness level will be less, there will be more inclusions in those portions. Then just after little changeover, again there is a possibility of 
some amount of entrapment as I have mentioned. So, we have to keep the cast product from these areas separately, we have to process separately because these are expected to have more inclusions, more cleanliness problems, more amount of oxide inclusions, entrapments. Then if there is a sudden fluctuation the, at the time of casting we know where there has been a sudden fluctuation because you know the mode level is continuously monitored in a modern caster. So, wherever there is a fluctuation we know at what stage of casting this fluctuation ta has taken place. So, we can separate out that particular cast product after casting is over because there is a feedback we know where at what stage of casting fluctuation has taken place. So, all these issues in a modern casting are helpful in not only understanding what is what is the possibility of inclusion entrapment, what is the possibility of cleanliness problem and also we should we know we come to will come to know during the casting stage at what stage there will be a problem. Not only we know what are the possibilities of a problem, but we know at what stage of casting there is a problem. So, that particular area of casting of the cast product that area of that put particular portion of the slab or bloom or billet we can separately keep, we can separate out from the normal cast products because we have a doubt, we have a, there is a possibility of inclusion entrapment, there is a possibility of you know uh, quality problem. So, we must take out those uh, cast products from the normal products. So, I have mentioned what are the possibilities of having inclusion or entrapment. Now, there is one interesting aspect I will discuss like what are the factors which affect castability. That means, when you are casting continuous casting there is a possibility of you know I have mentioned that choking of SEN ports that means, clogging of SEN ports. Now, what are the possibilities? I think mentioned the deposition of deoxidation products, reoxidation products or reaction products during casting. That means, whatever deoxidation products, reoxidation products or reaction products are forming within liquid steel at different stages of casting, they might get clogged, they might cause clogging. So, what are the possibilities? It, if there are aluminum and titanium oxide I have mentioned these are solid at the temperature of liquid steel. So, it looks like white. So, the clogged product lot of clogged product have been analyzed and people have found if it looks white then it's basically it is aluminum or titanium oxide which is looking more or less white slightly grayish maybe. Then if you have a calcium oxide alumina combination then I have mentioned earlier that you know CaO alumina combination the you know relative portion of relative proportion of CO and alumina will in will give us the liquid you know inclusions. I have mentioned earlier. So, if it is a liquid inclusion no problem liquid will float up there is no possibility of getting clogging, but certain you know ratio of COA L2O3 might also like only L2O3 gives solid you know inclusions some portion of COA L2O3 can also give like CaO L2O3 one mole of CO one mole of L2O3 is also solid at liquid steel temperature. So, that they might also create clogging. So, it looks green. Then as I have mentioned when you are using calcium feeding, calcium wear feeding, what is the purpose of calcium wear feeding? The purpose is to make the uh, inclusions, alumina inclusions liquid by adding adequate amount of CO and formation of CO alumina of particular uh, you know chemistry. So, that the solubility uh, rather the melting point is low and it is liquid. So, it helps the liquid inclusions to get float up and we do not get solid you know oxidation or reoxidation products, but if the calcium amount is not sufficient if there is adequate amount of sulfur in the steel then what happens 
calcium sulphide might also form and calcium sulphide these issues I have discussed earlier this calcium sulphide is solid at liquid steel temperature. So, this combination of CaO L 2 O 3 CaS because both CaO and calcium sulphide will form simultaneously when you are adding calcium in liquid steel. So, if the sulphur proper desulphurization has not taken place that means, the sulphur amount is slightly more if it is says 0 0.25, or 0 0.4 the liquid window is very you know very narrow. So, there is a possibility of formation of solid particles during calcium injection. So, these are the solid particles and this looks black this will ca cause nozzle clogging and interruption of you know continuous casting and the clogged products will come inside the liquid steel in mold will generate additional inclusions entrapments. So, these are the issues which might create problem during continuous casting. Then if the superheat you know always we are maintaining certain superheat if the superheat is high I will come later on what is the problem there will be more amount of you know core structure the cast structure is coarse the columnar zone will be there. So, that is not desirable, but if the superheat is very low almost near 0 or 5 there is a problem of solid steel build up that is a problem of solid that is steel getting solidified at the you know uh, within the sub entry nozzle and at the uh, you know port there might be a solid steel build up slowly which will again cause problem during casting interruption in casting. So, that is a problem superheat sh should not be very low. So, what is desirable is superheat of say 10 to 20 too much of superheat is bad the structure will be cast structure will not be desirable we will have more of columnar grains is a coarse structure which is not desirable, but very low superheat around 0 also may not be desirable from the point of view of this uh, cleanliness as well as solid steel build up. Then the I have mentioned the material and geometry of nozzle is very important no, sub entry nozzle SEN what we call it SEN geometry of SEN like how the steel will come up come out from the port what is the angle of port whether it is horizontal whether it is upwards angle is upwards angle is downwards what is the dia whether it is circular or it is elliptical these are all important issues you know modeling can help in deciding a optimum design of SEN. So, if the design is okay, not much of problem will be there if the design is not good maybe you know there is a possibility of castability problem you know interruption during continuous casting. 